And the fourth floor is PD, simply cuff them and tuck them. And I thought, okay, well, I'll get a call from JPS in the next 12 hours. Uh, but that did, call didn't come. So for about three days, I had no idea where my son is. Um, the fourth floor PD, when I called, said, well, if he's here, he'll be transferred soon. So I didn't find him until about three days later on June 10th. Um, and I'm terrified. My, my son doesn't hardly know how to write his own name. Right? I said, how is he gonna tell the people in the jail that he's <coughs> out here? A man with autism isn't gonna walk into a room and say, I'm autistic. You know, that's, that's not gonna happen. So how do we make sure that he, he was represented correctly in, in the system? Well, he wasn't, right? I found him June 10th. He was under a misspelled name. He had an incorrect name and he was with the general population. That means the group home didn't even tell the police officer his correct name or birthday or anything. So when he got into the system, he had no medication. I showed up that night at Fort Worth Tarrant County Jail and I gave the floor the lead. I had her come down. I gave her a copy of his meds signed by his psychiatrist. Um, and uh, I gave him a picture of his birth certificate. This is his name. He needs uh, to be he needs to talk to MHMR, nothing, nothing for days. It wasn't until I talked to friends and I found a, a reporter that I, because I knew what was happening. I knew too many of our IDD adults are dying in, in our jails. I was terrified. I was terrified that my son was going to be in this position. So I immediately contacted the reporter and she did a report, uh, that article that I passed around. I didn't find, um, and it was in, until that reporter's news article came out, not that Friday I went, June 10th. It wasn't until June 16th, a whole week later, that my son finally got his meds, about an hour after this article was released. That's ridiculous. A whole, almost eight or nine days when he wasn't on his depressive meds, he could have assaulted someone out of anger, frustration, coming down from all the medication he's on. He was lost in the system with no meds. So at this point, I couldn't bail him out because I needed to work on finding a new group home provider because I couldn't allow him to go back to the place that allowed him to be put in this position in the first place. And I was given a list and I called 17 providers in the area. No one had room for him. They'd say, oh, maybe. And as soon as I said what he had, they're like, oh, no, we don't have any room. I'm so sorry. Uh, so I, I only found the place because I called my niece in another state that's a provider in a different state and she found a place for him in, in Louisville, about an hour and a half from our home. But anytime I asked MHMR, they never mentioned any options. It wasn't only because my advocates and friends told me about the state supported living centers that that's when I, I heard about it um, and reminded them that if that was an option. They never answered. They never answered. Not the MHMR at the jail, not his local MHMR, um, and not his new MHMR that he's supposed to be transferred to. So he finally, I finally um, bailed him out about a month ago. Uh, they never answered my emails. They ignored my calls. Uh, the provider allowed him to stay, but we're still waiting on the current litter, the current MHMR to pick him up. Last I called on Friday, they still said, oh, I, we still don't have his transfers papers from MHMR Tarrant County, we're waiting for them. Um, so is the Tarrant County Jail the least restrictive environment for, for men like Gabriel? I was terrorized at him being in this population when he has the mentality of like a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old. So I heard about this committee and I'm here to impress upon this committee the urgency of coming up with a clear and robust plan for keeping people like Gabe out of this criminal punishment system. Gabe wasn't the first one with severe IDD in this jail and that's how I got the reporter's name. Kelly Maston last year was almost died. We all heard about it. It was all over the news in Fort Worth. And a couple of years before that, Chastity who gave birth alone and her newborn died. And these are just the cases that I know about. I can't even think of the countless other cases that we don't know about. So how is it that even when individuals like Gabe, who are documented, current members of LMHS and LIDAs, they fall through these cracks as soon as they're incarcerated? 
Even when our LMHA staff is in the jail, he still did not receive the essential care. Because uh, he, after he was released on bond, he happened to fall again back into the hospital. We realized that they didn't give him all his meds and Tarrant County Jail hadn't given him one of his most important injectable meds to help him with his um, mental health. So what happens to the continuity of care that my son was entitled to? I'm worried, Gabriel has a court date in December and they still, um, he can still end up in this jail. And the future of our society is defined by how we treat our most vulnerable and we're not doing a good job. And let us not forsake them to the confines of jail cells, but instead provide them the care and the understanding that they deserve. It could be your child. Thank you.